I'm using a number of these Ryden RD6006 DC power supply controllers to build some workshop uh, power supplies. If you've been watching my previous videos then you'll know that I built uh, one using a switching supply and I'm currently building one with a linear power supply. This is of course a switching controller still. Um, but I wanted to see what the difference was and before I go any further with assembling the current unit I thought we'd take a quick look at the RD6006 in a bit more detail. I'm not going to go into huge detail but uh, we'll have a quick look at uh, the inner workings of it, see what devices it uses and how it's constructed. So I've got a kitchen towel down here so I don't scratch the, uh, the front of the unit. Okay so it's quite nicely constructed it's uh, reasonable quality plastic, a lot better than a lot of the cheaper pieces of equipment that uh, we see these days. Good quality binding posts and um, so the overall design is quite nice, the way it's laid out is quite good. I've done a few videos on uh, how to use this so I'm not going to go into any detail in, in this video about how it actually is operated. I thought we'd just have a look inside and look at the uh, PCBs. So. We've got the main plastic moulding, single piece moulding, and everything is clipped into place. So obviously very quick and easy to assemble. The only thing to uh, bear in mind of course is that the uh, flat flex going to the LCD uh, would be quite easy to pull off if you're not careful with this. I'm not quite sure if the uh, display is clipped into the case or is attached to the board. We'll check that out in a minute. So the first thing we'll do is try and get the assembly out of the plastic case. So we can see there are a number of, of little uh, spring tabs. So we'll try pushing those back and see if that uh, allows us to pull the boards forward. Okay, well it took me a few minutes to figure out how to get this apart. It is a bit of a pain. Uh, obviously pull the knob off first. What you then have to do is uh, unsolder the three terminal posts because they are passed in through the front of the case and there's a step on the inside of the case and you can't uh, just pull the board straight out so once you've got those three out of the way you know, once you desolder them they do pop out reasonably easily uh, you can then just uh, release all the tabs and then the boards uh, will come out so you've got two boards power controller board and the actual uh, processor control board and there's this uh, little spacer in here that supports the terminal posts. So this board should now pop out which it does and we can see we've got the usual soft key mouldings in the front part of the case so I won't take it apart any more than that and um, a nice clear window that uh, would be very easy to change if it got broken so um, very nice start nicely made as I say good quality plastic if you do get a problem and you break the uh, the glass then that would be easy to replace okay so that's uh, the first part this is also very good quality plastic it's um, not so the usual rough and uh, very light plastic you'd get and same with the terminal post these are actually very nicely made nice and heavy. So what we appear to have, as I say I'm not going to do a full review of this, we'll have a, just a brief look at it. We've got the display, it is attached to the board so that makes it quite easy. Uh, I'll try and avoid touching these, these are of course the uh, contacts for the keyboard. We have the encoder, all the parts on the board are labelled again nicely assembled, the display is on nice and straight and what we have on the back is we have an ARM processor so that's obviously doing the main uh, control it's driving the display and looking at this it's also of course driving the keyboard so we've got a matrix layout for the keyboard it's driving that and then we have this uh, interface connector that goes through to the power controller board which we'll look at in a minute so all in all looks quite uh, straightforward. We've got uh, what looks like a USB driver, which it is, um, along with its own power controller. We have a header here, which P 
appears to be going through to the arm controller so I'm assuming that would give us access to modify or interrogate the firmware within the arm controller real-time clock that's pretty much all that's in there there's uh, nothing else there really just the sounder so that's pretty much it it's a relatively simple uh, controller board so anyone that's interested uh, that is the arm controller itself how clear that comes out but that is uh, an STM32F103 so uh, anyone that is familiar with ARM processors that probably means something too I don't use them a great deal, I've only used them a couple of times so I don't know too much about uh, ARM controllers okay so that's the probably the boring bit, the more interesting bit at least for me is uh, this part so this is obviously the power controller board we've got a relatively simple arrangement, we've got a heatsink on the top of the board a cutout in the board and the two power devices are bolted to the back of the heatsink so if we look at those we can see that we've got uh, an MBRF 20100CT and an SE100P60A which sounds like a 100 volt 60 amp per controller I'll try and find the spec sheets on these and, um, and put them up on the screen but uh, again we can see it's a relatively straightforward layout it's a uh, fairly standard uh, switching controller uh, all we've got are the two uh, main power devices uh, the inductor uh, and the capacitors across the output a replaceable fuse so just a very simple interface to the arm controller okay so main DC comes in through this connector it's going through an inductor just trying to follow through the traces to see where they go next Okay, and they do go pretty much straight through to the uh, power devices so it looks like it's just a very simple inductive switching system there's nothing uh, particularly fancy about it we've got what I believe is the uh, thermistor down here that's monitoring the internal temperature that is pressed up against the heatsink so that will be responsible for controlling this fan uh, we've got the local um, DC to DC converter here because obviously we'll have a very high voltage coming in here but that needs to be uh, stepped down and we've got a, a nice little switching uh, regulator here um, I believe these are the current sense resistors and as I say we've got a replaceable fuse relay which I didn't think the output was switched that's interesting, they have got a relay in here but it's on the inside of the capacitors the capacitors seem to be directly across the outputs so that's a bit of a strange arrangement, I'm surprised that the capacitors aren't on the inside of the relay so that um, the output goes off immediately, it might be an interesting modification to try to uh, modify this track to put the capacitors on the inside of the relay I'm assuming this relay is there to switch the output it's a um, 10 amp 30 volt relay so it's not really up to the job of switching the full output so maybe that's only switching the battery output OK, I'm going to get the uh, test meter and see if we can figure out what the relay is actually switching. OK, so I've got the test meter. We'll just quickly see what the relay is connected to. So firstly, we'll find the winding for the relay coil, which is those two pins. And then we'll see what the terminals are connected to. Let's put the beeper on. OK, so that is the positive... 
Okay, so what the relay is doing is it's connecting the positive um, power pin to the battery charge terminal. So it looks like this is responsible for disconnecting the battery charge output. Um, so that kind of makes sense. It's um, it's not controlling the main power, which is unfortunate. It would be nice if there was a second relay that did that. It explains why the capacitors appear to be on the outside of the uh, relay. So it's just there to control the the battery charge terminal doesn't seem to be doing anything else and uh, obviously it allows the controller to disconnect the battery once it's charged up. Okay, I'll get the meter out of the way. Okay, well the rest of it seems to be fairly simple. There's nothing else really I can see on there that's uh, worth looking at. So we've got the input voltage measurement circuitry And that's pretty much it. Okay, so as expected, uh, quite a simple device. There's nothing um, that complex in here. It's just a couple of um, uh, power devices being controlled to switch um, current through an inductor, uh, and that in turn is then fed through directly to the output terminals. And everything else in here is just really there to sense the current and the voltage that's going to the uh, the terminals. We've got some fairly beefy um, output capacitors. So we've got uh, three here that appear to be all connected in parallel. So um, each one's 330 microfarad, 80 volt. So that gives us around a thousand microfarads on the output, which is why it takes so long for the output voltage to drop. Okay, well that's it. If there's anything else you want me to look at in more detail, then uh, let me know. But uh, as I said, as expected, very simple. Most of the complex stuff is to drive the interface, the display, um, and the keyboard. The rest of it is just some very simple um, power device switching and um, current and voltage feedback. Okay, so I'll get this reassembled. I've been fairly careful not to touch the inside of the glass. If I had touched that, I'd need to give it a good clean with some IPA. Uh, but all I should need to do is drop the uh, main control board in. Again, I've been careful not to touch the display. There are a couple of uh, sets of clip stops that needs to be uh, got past. So that's the first one and the second one. Make sure the clips are all the way in. Everything's uh, working, not binding, all the keys are in the right place. Okay, a few of the clips are a little bit tight, but I'll actually stop the board moving around. Okay, well it's a bit uh, tight, but I've got the main board clipped all the way in now. Got all the clips all the way around uh, to engage. It actually looks like they designed it to have a screw fitted in the middle of the keyboard, but uh, there certainly wasn't a screw there when I took it apart. So I'm not going to bother fitting one and it um, doesn't actually seem to need it anyway, which presumably is why they didn't uh, fit it. And there's another one there. so. I think they just put these here just to allow for some support for the keys and for the socket for the USB, uh, but have decided that they weren't needed. Uh, okay, so the next thing is to get the terminal post fitted. Make sure they're in the right holes. And they pass through the front of the case and then into this, which is quite a tight fit, it's quite tight to get off. these off camera so I don't break anything. Okay, that's the first one. And the next. And finally the ground. So once all three terminals are in place, the next thing is to fit the uh, power controller board. Obviously I need to make sure that all three terminal posts go through their correct holes 
and that all the pins on the connector engage properly with the connector on the control board. So you want me to see this, but I'm just making sure the pins line up uh, as I push the board in. Which they do. And then I'll just engage all the clips and then I can re-solder the terminal post into place. Right, so that's the board's refitted. I've checked to make sure it's all lined up the way it should be. I've re-soldered the uh, terminal posts and all I need to do now is uh, refit the knob. Okay, so I'll uh, connect it to some power and see if I've managed to break it. Okay, I've got it connected to the Rigel, set to 30 volts at 3 amps. I'll try and power it up, see if we get any activity on the screen. Well, it's looking good so far. It's come up as it should, 30 volts, 5 amps. And the output seems to be doing what it should. Okay, well it still seems to work. So I've got the temperature sensor connected as well just to make sure that was working. So uh, I'll try getting hold of that, see if the temperature goes up. That's this temperature here and it is rising. So that's working fine. So it's all back together, it's working. I won't give it a full test now, it, um, I'm sure it'll work. And um, that's the RD6006.